I use Fermat's Little Theorem all the time when it comes to number theory type problems. And in fact, I've given a couple of proofs on the channel of this theorem. I gave the standard proof, which comes from an elementary number theory class. And I've also given like a geometric combinatorial proof as well. And so today I want to give another proof. And there's actually some motivation for seeing lots of proofs of Fermat's little theorem. Well, first off, it lets you understand the theorem very well. And Fermat's little theorem is famous in that there have been many, 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 many different proofs of this theorem proven, or I should say written. And so here we're going to look at an induction proof of Fermat's little theorem. So let's recall what FLT says first. So it says for all natural numbers a, and in fact it says for all integers a, but I'll let you guys extend this to integers, and primes p, we have a to the p is congruent to a mod p. This is a version of Fermat's little theorem. Sometimes it's written as a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p if a is not divisible by p. But that actually extends very easily from this as well. Notice if a is not divisible by p, it has an inverse mod p, then we can just multiply both sides of this congruence by a inverse and we get that other version. So the proof that we'll take will heavily rely on the following lemma. It says for all n between 1 and p minus 1, we have the binomial coefficient p choose n is congruent to 0 mod p. So let's do the proof of that first. So I first want to notice that p choose n is going to be a natural number for all n in the given region and for all primes p. Obviously, p doesn't have to be a prime here for this to be a natural number, but p does have to be a prime in order for this to hold. Next up, I want to notice the case when n is equal to 1 is easy because p choose 1 is equal to p, which is clearly congruent to 0 mod p. So we'll look at the case when n is bigger than 1. Okay, if n is bigger than 1, then n factorial is also bigger than 1. And we can make the following fairly simple observation that n factorial does not divide p. Well, why is that? The only factors of p are 1 and p. That's exactly the definition of a prime. But n factorial is the product of everything between 1 and n, but n is less than p. So since n is less than p, you never achieve that other factor of p, that being itself. Okay, so now let's go from there. Let's take this and rewrite it via its definition. So p choose n is equal to p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 all the way down to p minus n plus 1 all over n factorial. Next, we'll put our two facts together. So our first fact is that p choose n is a whole. So our first fact is that p choose n is a whole number, and our second fact is that n factorial does not divide p, but that tells us that n factorial must divide the rest of this stuff. So that's p minus 1 all the way down to p minus n plus 1. But then that means that all of this is equal to a natural number. So we'll call it m, which is a natural number, which means we can write all of this as m times p, which is congruent to 0 mod p. Okay, so that finishes the proof of this lemma, which is essentially all we need to prove this very quickly. So let's get to that proof. So now that we've got this proof of our lemma, we're going to prove from little theorem using induction. So let's start with our base case. And our base case will be the first natural number. In other words, a is equal to 1. But if a is equal to 1, that means a to the p is equal to 1 to the p, which is also equal to 1. But here we have equality between a and a to the p, but equality between a and a to the p clearly implies congruence mod p. 
between A and A to the P. Equality is stronger than congruence. Okay, so next let's make our induction hypothesis. So that means we want to suppose for some B bigger than or equal to one, we have the result holding. So we've got B to the P is congruent to B modulo P. And then next we wanna consider B plus one to the P. So let's do that. So consider B plus one to the P but via the binomial theorem, we can expand this fairly easily. So that's gonna be the sum as n goes from zero all the way up to p of p choose n times b to the n. Again, that's just by the binomial theorem. Next, I'll take out the zeroth term and the pth term. Notice the zeroth term will be p choose zero, which is just one, b to the zero, which is one. And then that pth term is p choose p, which is again one, and then b to the p. So I've got one plus b to the p plus the sum as n goes from one up to p minus one of p choose n, b to the n. Okay. But let's see what our lemma shows us. Our lemma tells us that every term for the, from the sum is congruent to zero mod p. So that means this entire sum must in fact be congruent to zero mod p. But then our induction hypothesis tells us that b to the p is congruent to b mod p. So that means we can take all of this and write it as b plus one mod p. So let's just reiterate what went on here. So the induction hypothesis, which I'll maybe underline in yellow, gave us this congruence, which I have in yellow. And then the lemma told us that all of the rest of this stuff, which might be bad, is actually okay because it's just zero mod p. So in the end, we have b plus 1 to the p is congruent to b mod p, and that finishes this proof by induction. And that's a good place to stop.